So we have a huge problem at D-Labs. We're trying to recruit, oh, sorry. Not yet. Okay, it's working now. So we have a huge problem at D-Labs. We're trying to recruit new testers for almost half a year now without any success. And it's not the issue that we are picky. Well, sure, we all a little bit who isn't. But the bigger problem is that almost no one applies. So I started wondering, like, how come? This is the best job in the world. I've been doing other jobs before. I've been a developer. I calculated mathematics for gambling games. But being a tester, this is the awesomest job in the world. And I just can't understand why no one else wants to do it. You know, you discover mistakes and you let everyone else fix them. What's not good about that? So I started researching and tried to figure out what's wrong about this job that no one wants to do it. And I looked on the internet and, well, it turns out that what the internet thinks about testing at testers has absolutely nothing to do with the way who we are and how the job actually looks like. So this is what the internet thinks about testing. No wonder no one wants to do it if this is the perce perception of the job. You know, we are not that blonde running around in circle, doing mindless job, being brainless, and getting paid bananas at the end of the day. Yeah, so when you grew up, of course, you wanted to, to be that cool guy inventing stuff, not the blonde. So, but that's not the case. That's not how the job looks like. So I was once wondering, one cartoon couldn't change the way this job looks like. So let's look a bit further in the history. There has to be the root of this perception. And I started searching and thinking way back. And let's move back to the era when we didn't have computers. I think maybe one or two people in this room will still remember that. So what we had there, we didn't have computers, we didn't have software, what we had? Well, we had physical objects. And how do you test a physical object? Well, you try to destroy it. Why are you testing it like that? You know, as a TV maker, you want to know how many times an enraged football fan watching his uh, club losing on TV, how many times can he kick the TV before it will shut down? So, if that's the way you test, what kind of person do you need for that? Well, I guess he needs a bit of muscle so he can hold a hammer. He needs stamina so he can keep kicking the same thing for the whole day. But apart from that, well, not really much. I guess it's useful if he can count so we know how many kicks the TV survived, but that's more or less it. And imagine doing that for the whole day. Of course, it's interesting to destroy objects, but not destroying it for the whole day or for the whole week or for the whole year. You know, it gets really brainless and boring. And who can do this kind of job? Everyone can do it. You can pick the random person from the street and say, you know, you have two hours of free time, just you know, do that. And when everyone can do a job, you know, the, the thing with supply and demand happens and we, have, we get those bananas. So, but of course, software, sure, surely software isn't like that, is it? Let's move forward to when we had computers and software. But let's not go to the present. Let's stop in the mid-90s, beginning of 2000, when, not, when we didn't have mobile phones yet. Um, not mobile phones, sorry, smartphones yet. We didn't ha have tablets. Not everyone had a computer. Not everyone had internet. This is how the, the regular software looked back then. See, it's quite similar to that physical object. You don't really have much to test. There's some text. There might be a link or two. There might be a button. But for testing this, you don't really need much more skill than that hammer guy, do you? Well, you don't need a hammer. So it's actually maybe even easier to get a person. And then let's look 10 years further. Software all of a sudden doesn't look like the previous one before. Do you still think the hammer guy can test this? You know, see the amount of things that's going on. See the amount of options, of clicks, of fields to be filled in. So if a hammer guy can do it, well, we need someone else. We need a different kind of person. So who is that kind of person? Where do we get it? I'll talk about that a little bit further. Um, but 
I like to compare modern software with a spaceship. You know, it's like that, isn't it? You have so many options. The thing can do everything. And when you have a precious thing like that, do you really let the previous two guys in it? You know, the blonde or the hammer guy? I doubt you will. I doubt you will. This is too precious to be destroyed by a random person. So what kind of person do you need to test this? Well, for who is this product meant for? If you're talking about spaceships, spaceship is meant for a pilot. So if you want to be a good tester, you have to mimic a pilot. What does that mean? That you will do everything that a pilot would do. You know, you would go places. You'll do different routes. You'll go fly through asteroids. You'll try to avoid black holes. You know, you'll try to press all different buttons and combinations. You'll try to save yourself from different situations. And I've never heard anyone say, you know, pilot is a sucky job. So why do we think QAing is a sucky job? So we need a person who's good at precision. You know, we need a person who can, who's capable of thinking all those different ways. We need a person who, who's not afraid to do all those different, uh, different things. So where do we get those people? I'm pretty sure at least, at least half of this room has these capabilities. So how do you know if you're a good fit for a tester? How do you know if you're you know, a tester in the making? I have three, well, that's my, my way of determining it. So I have three questions that I can ask you. The first one is, let's think about how you play games. I'm sure everyone in this room plays games. If I show you this screenshot, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Look a bit around. You know, are you thinking, let's kill that monster? Or are you thinking, what's in those barrels over there? Or are you thinking, oh, I'm wondering what's in the next room? Do you see the difference? Tester will always think, you know, what's hidden there? What's hidden in the other place? And some other kinds of people will just go, you know, straight for the kill. I don't care about anything else. So think about it. When you play games, do you explore? Do you pick up every stone? Do you open every chest and look what's inside? Or do you just go straight for the top level monster and try to win that game? Mm. The second question is, are you a detective? You know, do you like to question people? Are you an inquisitor? Do you like to prove other people wrong? Do you like solving mysteries? Do you like discovering unknowns? Do you like mind puzzles? Do you like any kind of brain teasers? That's the kind of mind that fits the QA person perfectly. Because that's what you want to do when you are testing the software. You want to find and discover every niche. You want to look into every corner and see what's hidden there and prove developers wrong and find, those ed find that edge case they forgot. So are you like that? And the third thing is quite different from the, these two. Do you like to travel? When you travel, and if you like to travel, you have this mindset of discovering new things. You like to learn every day. So you like to be exposed to different situations and do something new every day. But it's not just that. Think about the average developing team. You will have, I don't know, five, maybe 10 developers. You will have a tester, two if you're really lucky. And you will have one manager, or maybe two or 10, depends on how hierarchical is your company. But you, know, you have a client, and the client will want a small team on site for, for a while to help them with something, to set up something. Guess who will go? Well, they'll send a developer or two, they'll send a tester, and they'll send a manager. You don't really have to be a mad genius to calculate your chances of going if you like to travel. So with all this cool stuff, I hope I'm, slightly, I'm slowly convincing you that being a tester is not a bad thing, is it? I really like doing it. It's fun and engaging. And so how my regular day looks like? Well, I go to the job. I drink a coffee and have breakfast. Then I sit in front of computer. Then I play with mobile phones and um, tablets. Then I go to a few meetings. I communicate with people. Then I try to test few tickets they expect me to do. 
you know, stuff like that, and I laugh at it, or stuff like that, which makes even more less sense to test. Then I go yell at a few people who thought this is a great idea to label this as a hotfix. You know, changing the picture, which no one ever sees. And then I repeat the yelling the next day, because some people really think that's the way you do hotfixes. <laughs> so all in all, we're actually having great fun. Because when you're a developer, you see those things. But you see a little bit of them. But when you're a tester, you see the whole project. You test the whole project. You're involved in every aspect of the product development. So you see not one thing every now and then, but you see those things daily. So you can be a grumpy about it and go, ah, or you, just, you, know, you can just have fun, of it and fun about it and laugh about it. Um, so we looked in the past, and we talked about the present. Now let's look to the future a little bit. Let's move 10, 15, maybe 20 years in the, in the future. You will be doing your job for so long that you will be really good at it, and you'll start thinking about, let's start sharing the knowledge. Let's, let's move into more higher position. Let's oversee the product. Let's oversee the team. Let's, let's manage people. Let's manage projects. Now think about it. As a tester, you communicate a lot because you want to get all the information how the product is supposed to work. And then you have to be really smart in communicating all those bugs and edge cases you find so the developers will actually understand what you found and how to fix it and to actually fix it. Um, you have to write a report or two. So guess who has better, who, guess who after 10 or 20 years developed better skills to be a manager? You know, when you become, become a manager, you really start going higher up the ranks and the salary goes up as well, I suppose. <laughs> so um, do you like what you heard? Getting more convinced that testing is not that brainless job, but it's actually a really fun and cool thing to do. Oops. Will I have to talk about it again? Maybe, I don't know. Anyways, um, I will definitely, if we don't get another hire in the next few days or months, so um, if you liked what you heard, Drop me an email, let's talk about it, and yeah, come work with my awesome team. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we have a lot of time now to, um, for questions, so please free to ask some stuff. I'd be happy to answer. Yes, please. So the question was what kind of applications I test? Uh, do you mean domain-wise, or is it like mobile web? Okay, okay, so the question is what kind of what kind of uh, applications I prefer testing or what I test the most. So what we develop at D-Labs, we're an agency, so we develop stuff for other startups and other companies. You know, startups usually go, you know, we want stuff for every platform. So what we usually test is web and mobile at the same time. I actually prefer testing web because it's less complicated. You know, when you're testing on phone, you have to test things on a few different devices. You know, switching from Android to iOS, it's not as easy as it sounds. You know, buttons are, Every, every time on different places, you know, the things are positioned different and all that, ah, you know, raging a little bit. So with web, it's a bit easier and you don't have that many options. So that's why I prefer it. But then again, testing on mobile is more challenging and, you know, you don't have to stare at the computer the whole day. You can pick up the phone and go to the, I don't know, sit in Jabuz and do the testing there. You don't have to be in the seat in front of the computer. Um, so the question was, do, I, do you need to be developer first to become a tester? And if not, what technical skills do you need? I say you don't really need technical skills. Some people will say, yes, you do, because you have to know how to use the computer and you have to know how to open the console in browser and all that stuff. But actually, you can learn all that in first week or two. So what you really need is the mindset. You remember those three questions I asked? Well, the third one is, you know, not really a mindset, but... You know, the first two things, you know, how you think, what's happening in your head. Do you like, do you like discovering edge cases? You know, are you patient? Um, are you inquisitive? Um, do you look into details? Do you have the eye? You know, do, when you go down the street, do you notice, you know, this wasn't here yesterday. 
You know, this kind of mindset you need. You, you know, you, like, you have to like solving puzzles. And you, you have to like exploring, and that's it. That's pretty much what you need as a tester. We'll teach you technical skills later on. Right? Okay. Any other question? Yes, please. What tools do you use for automated testing on mobile? We don't have automated, tested on mob automated testing on mobile. Okay. We started doing automated testing um, on web, and for that we are using uh, just WebDriver IO and whatever comes from that, and this is a Selenium thing. So I don't want to go into detail, more detail about that because it's a really technical topic, and I think the general audience isn't that technical, but we can talk about it a bit more about um, yeah, later on. But we didn't tackle that for mobile yet. Or at least, like, our mobile team is dislocated, so maybe they use something, but I'm not aware of it. So on mobile, I do just manual testing. Yeah. I think I saw another hand earlier on. Yes, please. Well, I'm, right now I'm getting paid more than I used to be paid when I was doing mathematics for gambling, and mathematics for gambling is supposed to be, you know, really good paid, good paid job. So, and I would say, you know, my salary right now, I can't test, speak about numbers, but I would say I have the same salary as, like, mid-tester as mid-developer does. So I think it's pretty equal, at least in our company. I checked a few statistics on, so online, and I would say... Like those general statistics say it's a difference. Average testing salary would be about 10% lower than developer, test, de developer salary. But again, when you're testing, you know, you still have jobs that look like, you know, the first few slides. And the more, the more difficult it gets and the more you are involved in the, in the whole product, not just testing the end result the last day before the release where you can't really do anything anymore. Um, the more you're involved in the whole product, and especially if you do some automated testes, testing as well, well, the higher gets your salary. And because there's huge demand for testers, you know, you can be paid actually more than developers. Yes, please. You mentioned Selenium. Yes. Um, do you only focus on front-end testing, on user interface testing? Uh, for now, yes. Because even in our company, we have a testing team for, what, about two, three years now? So, you know, we slowly progress from one person then to two person. Now we have three people, and now we actually have enough time so someone can devote some of his or her time to testing. So, yeah, we're still quite noobs at that. So, yeah, it would be great to get someone in the company who's re who really knows something about it and, you know, teach, teach us a little bit about that. Okay, we have five more minutes, so still time for a few more questions. Yes, please. Uh, how easier is the testing for you if the developer is already uh, practicing like uh, unit testing and uh, he, already, he or she already does some testing by himself? So what we figured out is that unit tests don't really solve the problem. I think what makes the biggest difference is whether team does peer reviews or not. Because when the team does peer reviews, they will catch a lot of things already, and then I get less bugs in the final product. When they don't do that, you know, you just get shit. <laughs> but you know, as I said, you know, you can take it as a bad thing, or you can just laugh about it and have a good time. So I think, I think this is really cool, and the team in our company is really cool about that. You know, we joke all the time about different stuff we find, different really silly edge cases we discovered, and the developers overlooked, so yeah. So the question was, do we do demos for customers? Um, we do on some projects. It really depends because we are working on so many projects. It depends on the client, on the size of the project, you know, on the timeline of the project, many, many of those things. But um, if we are doing, if we are doing like a Scrum-like, um, um, I don't know how you say, project management, you know, um, then yes, then usually at the end of the sprint we have a demo. It can be just internal demo or for clients. So who does the, who does the demo? Um, I guess it really depends. I encourage developers to do the demo because they show exactly what they did and they can be proud about that. But if we need to present, you know, to a bigger audience, to a client, then we usually find, you know, someone in, in the company who doesn't really have to be related to a person, but someone who can speak, someone who can present really good, because that's more important than actually what you're showing is how you're showing it. So the client isn't bored all there and has, not, has no clue what's going on, you know. So we can focus on things that are key 
to the client. So you show the, the key things to the, to the client. All right. Something else? Yes, please. <laughs> what kind of person do you look at the lab? So age-wise and experience-wise? Well, for a while, at least on one project, they really wanted a senior tester. But right now, we said, well, we can get it. So yeah, we'll just take junior as well. So yeah, just come with the right mindset. That's it. You know, show us that you want to, you want to learn. Show us that you want to explore. Show us that um, you're, you have this inquisitive uh, mind, that you, 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 you like solving mind puzzles, you know, this kind of thing. And yeah, we'll invite you to the test day, and we'll see from there on, there on how it goes. Any questions from the back there? Yes, please. OK, so the question was, if the tester is the last person and he gets thing you know, one day before the release, what, what do you do? Well, we'll try to avoid that. So they say it's a bit a different thing when you say testing and quality assurance. And testing is supposed to mean you know, just testing the last day. And the quality assurance means you know, making sure that you're not testing just the last day. So this is something we're trying to do. As a tester, at least in our company, we're trying to be involved from the beginning of the product. So when they start thinking about what they will make, and when we see the first wireframes and designs, so even at that stage, we can say, well, this is missing, this is missing. You know, are you sure this will go fine? You know, usually when we have this kind of feature, this kind of bugs and, um, will, occur, will occur, we just know it. You know, even if we told the developers 10 times, you know, watch out, don't do this, well, it will still happen the 11th time. Um, so we are trying to, we are trying to pro prevent all that. So you don't really have to test the last day then, because all the testing happens before. So, and we ran out of time. If everyone wants to talk to me later on, you, I'll be here all day. So you can just find me on any of the talks or outside the halls. And have a great time today. Thank you.